It's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if Earth grew one centimeter per second? Now, is its mass constant? For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see. This question comes from Dennis, who asks, how long would it take for people to notice their weight gain if the mean radius of the world increased by one centimeter every second, assuming the average composition of rock were maintained? Okay, so the density is going the same. The mass of the Earth is going up. I was going to say, if you were just increasing the radius, everyone would actually get lighter. <laughs> Let's imagine the whole Earth, from crust to core, starts expanding uniformly beneath our human structures, which don't expand. To avoid another drain the ocean scenario, we'll assume the ocean expands too. We okay, so if I read that right, gravity would actually gradually increase, since gravity is directly pro proportional to mass, but inversely proportional to the radius squared. But mass is increasing faster than the radius is increasing. When the Earth started expanding, you'd feel a slight jolt, and then you'd be moving steadily upward at one centimeter per second and wouldn't feel any kind of on- That's true, there would be an initial something driving that, whatever's causing this magical force at work. Going acceleration. For the rest of the day, you wouldn't notice much of anything. After the first day, the Earth would have expanded by 864 meters. Gravity would take a long time to increase noticeably. If you weighed 70 kilograms when the expansion started, you'd weigh 70.01 at the end of the first day. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I figured, because the mass is increasing much faster than the radius, despite it being inversely proportional to radius squared, with all of this being in proportion, somehow. With the ground expanding beneath them, how fast would our roads and bridges fail? Well, not as quickly as you might think. Here's a puzzle I heard once. Imagine you tied a rope tightly around the Earth so it was hugging the surface all the way around. Now imagine you wanted to raise the rope one meter off the ground. How much extra length would you need to add to the rope? Miles? Hundreds of miles? The answer is about six meters. Circumference is proportional to radius, so if you increase the radius by one unit, you increase the circumference by two pi units. It's interesting how there's actually a simple solution to that. After one Granted, the Earth's not perfectly spherical, but... One day, the 40,000 kilometer circumference of the Earth would increase by 2 pi times 864 meters, or 5.4 kilometers, which is about 0.01%. And that'd be handled easily by virtually all structures. Concrete expands and contracts by more than that every day. And that would include things like nuclear power plants. In fact, nuclear power plants have a fairly low profile. The tallest structures are typically the cooling towers, but not all nuclear power plants actually have cooling towers. The one that I worked at just had a really, really big cooling reservoir. One of the first real effects you'd notice would be that GPS satellites would stop working correctly. Mm. The satellites would stay in roughly the same orbits, but the incredibly precise timing and synchronization between ground stations and satellites would be ruined within hours. Most other yeah. clocks would keep working fine. Those are real precise. I know a similar thing would happen if the speed of the Earth's rotation were affected. However, if you have a very precise pendulum clock, you might notice something odd. By the end of the day, it would be three seconds ahead of where it should be. Mm. After a month, the Earth would have expanded by 26 kilometers, an increase of 0.4%. Surface gravity would also only have gone up 0.4%, even though the Earth's mass would have increased by 1.2%. Surface gravity is proportional to radius, which is because as the planet grows, it gets more massive, but you also get further away from the middle. You wouldn't know because as the planet grows, it gets more massive, but you also get further away from the middle. And there you have it, a combination of the force of gravity as well as the square cube law. Note that the inverse square law with respect to gravity also applies for intensity of radiation from the source. So you double your distance from the source, your dose goes down by a factor of four. You wouldn't notice this difference in weight even using a scale. Human body weights vary by much more than 0.4% over the course of a day, let alone a month. And gravity is- I was gonna say, especially if it's November, December, um, if you're anything like me, it might go up a bit with holiday treats. <laughs> more so than expansion of the Earth. Though at this point, at about a month or weeks to months, I could see the first thing that nuclear plants would have to deal with would need to be reinforcing against structural shifts caused by this expansion after about a month. And events like earthquakes and volcanoes would increase in frequency. And there are emergency procedures for safe shutdown earthquakes. I talk about those procedures more in this earthquake video. One other thing that could come up is it's possible cooling water supplies could shift depending on how the water spills and where the basins are oriented, the reservoirs. So 
may need to have plans for potential alternative sources of cooling water. Itself varies by this much between different cities. What you would notice is the expansion. True. You'd see lots of cracks opening up in long concrete structures and the failure of elevated roads and old bridges. Most buildings would probably be okay, although those anchored firmly into bedrock might start to behave unpredictably. Nuclear power plants probably be alright for now, because a lot of them just simply aren't very long and have a relatively low profile, and you're not gonna see them on a hill like this. Things like hydroelectric though, dams, structures embedded into cliff sides and hillsides, yeah I can see. After a year, gravity would be 5% stronger, and the ground underneath structures would have expanded by 5%. Huh? You would probably notice the weight gain, and you would definitely notice Notice the failure of roads, bridges, power lines, satellites, and undersea cables. <laughs> yeah, satellites, big and precise orbits, sure. At this point, with the increased frequency of earthquakes, yeah, a lot of plants are going to be shut down. So it's possible if we're talking about losing things like power lines, that there's a big enough fault in the grid that's going to force power plants to shut down simply due to electrical faults in the generator. If the generator trips or the main turbine trips, that's going to result in an automatic emergency shutdown of the reactor. If you're above a certain power level, it's automatic. But even if you're not, procedures will have you stabilize the reactor, where the reactor could still be online, but you're not supplying the grid anymore because no turbine, no generator. So the plant's not exactly helping provide electricity anymore at that point. And correcting any electrical fault, especially when you're dealing with this sort of crazy scenario, you're probably going to turn off the reactor anyway. Your pendulum clock would now be ahead by five days. After five years, gravity would be 25% stronger. Okay, yeah, at this point, <laughs> I'm just thinking of the stress on the tectonic plates. So I don't Thing. After five years, I don't know if the continents are going to look like this anymore. They're just going to be breaking apart. We would see oceans expand with the caveat in this scenario about them saying the oceans were going to be held constant. You could see the oceans appearing to get bigger in this scenario relative to the continents breaking up. Kind of depends with what rules of this functional magic scenario that we're playing with. If you weighed 70 kilograms when the expansion started, you'd weigh 88 now. <laughs> Most of our infrastructure would have collapsed. Yeah. The cause would be the ground expanding by 25%, not the increased gravity. Surprisingly, most skyscrapers would hold up fine under much higher gravity. The limiting factor isn't weight, but shear forces like wind or the ground expanding. After 10 years, gravity would be 50%. Now, is the atmosphere expanding uniformly? Because if not, you're going to have thinner atmospheric pressure and people might be more adversely affected by oxygen levels going down rather than gravity going up. Stronger. We'll assume the atmosphere is expanding too. Otherwise, okay. <laughs> Thank you. There wouldn't be enough to cover the growing Earth, and the air would by now be getting too thin to breathe. With well, I guess that answers that question. I like this. He's playing along with this functional magic scenario. Kind of like if you were granted a wish for a superpower and you wanted super speed for some reason, you would also need to have the required secondary powers of super strength so you don't burn yourself up. Expanding atmosphere, surface air pressure would rise due to both increased gravity and more air, but we'd be okay for a little while longer. After 40 years, Earth's <laughs> sound effect. So, if any nuclear power plants were still operating at this point, this could actually increase your efficiency. <laughs> For your cooling towers, anyway. Higher air pressure, cooling towers dissipate heat more effectively. So there's the bright side. Earth's gravity would have tripled. At this point, even the strongest humans would be able to walk only with very great difficulty. Breathing the thick air would be a challenge. Yeah. Trees would collapse and crops wouldn't stand up under their own weight. After 100 years, we'd be experiencing over 6 Gs of gravity. So before we get to the 100 years point, that if we're talking... If we're really talking about increased air pressure, you're going to have crazier storms, and there would also be an increased fire risk just due to all the added oxygen. But it's going to be so heavy, while increased oxygen would make you stronger at, at, at this point, being offset by the gravity, your lungs aren't going to know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not good. Not only would we be unable to move around to find food, but our hearts would be unable to pump blood to our brains. Only small insects and sea animals Hi. would be physically able to move around. 
On top of that, at somewhere around this point, even ordinary air becomes toxic due to higher oxygen levels. Perhaps humans could survive oxygen toxicity, but hey, you'll also have better shielding from cosmic radiation. <laughs> Not worth the trade-off. Survive in controlled pressure chambers by keeping our bodies horizontal and tended to by robots, but this is about as far as we're gonna make it. Would the Earth eventually become a black hole? It's hard to answer that, because the premise of Dennis's question is that the radius steadily expands while the density stays the same. I don't think so. The Schwarzschild radius would continually increase. And you need to be going the other direction to make a black hole. Its mass is spreading out. Whereas to make a black hole, the density increases. Under realistic physics, by adding more mass to the Earth, we would eventually exceed the strength of the chemical bonds to withstand the growing internal stresses, and the Earth would contract rather than expand, collapsing True. So, it depends how potent this magic is. Suppose you can make a magical black hole. ...into something like a sputtering white dwarf star held up by electron degeneracy pressure. <laughs> so electron degeneracy is all about the Pauli exclusion principle, or two electrons cannot occupy the same quantum state. And as matter is compressed, electrons find themselves in higher and higher energy states. And this is quantum. So temperature doesn't matter. Even at absolute zero, this still holds true since we're talking quantum states, not individual thermal kinetic motion. This is the same sort of thing that would happen to the sun later in life when it sheds its outer layers and the remaining core collapses. That's what keeps it at a white dwarf. So he's saying this could happen to Earth depending on which rules of physics you obey and which rules of physics you decide to break in this scenario. Interesting. Then, after around 1500 years of expansion, if the Earth's mass kept increasing according to the original premise, after 1500 years, the Earth would pass the Chandrasekhar limit for white dwarf stars and become a black hole. <laughs> So that is the maximum mass that a white dwarf star can have while still being supported by electron degeneracy pressure. Like anything else, it has its limits. Figures out to about one and a half solar masses, by the way. And here I mentioned black hole. It's also possible for it to collapse into a neutron star being held by neutron degeneracy pressure, which is a similar thing, but with neutrons. Far denser than electrons. But if that fails, then yeah, you have your black hole. But to me, this sounded like they were changing the scenario a bit. But again, we're dealing with magic at this point. So sure, have a black hole. Why not? But before it gets that far, it's a shame humans wouldn't survive 300 years because at this point, something really neat would happen. As the Earth grew, the moon would, like all our satellites, gradually spiral inward. After several centuries, it would be close enough to the swollen Earth that the tidal forces between Earth and the moon would be stronger than the gravitational forces holding the moon together. The Ro oh yeah, the, the Roche limit. There's a lot of limits in this video. Makes it fun. When the moon passed this boundary, called the Roche limit, it would gradually break apart, and the Earth would, for a short time, have rings. Yeah, if you like it, put a ring on it. This one was really entertaining. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.